Uh, good morning. Uh, we're here at the headquarters of ES Sprint Media Inc. Uh, and we are honored to interview the President and Chairman, Edward Sokua. Edward, good morning. Morning. Thank you so much for allowing us to interview you. You know, we've been planning this and we're excited that finally you granted us to interview you. It's my honor as well. Thank you. Yes. Uh, your, your story is very inspiring considering that you started a small printing uh, company in, in Pangasinan and uh, now you have 11 branches all over the Philippines. Can you tell us more how did you start about it, please? So yes, uh, 2001 uh, my company started as an offset printing and uh, 2004 we started we, we ventured into large format printing. Uh, we got our first large format printer. 2004, I moved to Manila. And then um, I realized I needed a bigger machine and I cannot afford it locally. So I went to China and brought my first uh, large format printer. So when, when you went to China, um, what, was it, what was in your mind? Uh, were you really... Uh, looking at the bigger uh, business like this? No, um, during those times because um, ES Print was a service provider, I need a bigger machine. My first machine was only six, six feet in width and I need a 10.5 printer. Unfortunately, I cannot afford it locally so uh, I went to try to import it myself and for, for my personal use. Wow, that, that's interesting. And right now, you have different kinds. You are one of the country's leading uh, digital and printing uh, companies. Uh, what do you realize after starting that kind of uh, business uh, back in Kalashau and now here in Manila? So my business before and my business now is a totally different approach, totally different business. Uh, before, I'm printing for end users. Now I don't do that anymore. Um, I supply the printers for printing companies to serve the end user. So before it's a bus business to consumer, now it's business, business to business. To business. Wow. business to consumer, then business to business. Why did you shift your strategy? That's a very good question, uh, Monsi. Um As I told you, I brought in my printer. It's for my personal use. Yeah. And then a lot of my friends saw the printer and they wanted to buy one. So I was like, okay, uh, I sold them and I supported the unit. And then one unit became two, became three, until I realized that I have already much in installed. So there was a, a time where it's, all, it's already a conflict of interest because I'm printing and I'm selling the equipment. See? So how can my customers compete with me if I'm the one importing it and supporting it, yeah? So, the, way back, I forgot the time, but the, the decision to leave the printing services came when the conflict of interest is already there. So I decided to distribution of the printing, of distribution of printing equipment. Well, you know, this is admirable. The business ethic, uh, you know, I am really amazed uh, because most of the businessmen wouldn't think that way. And I also saw that a lot of people are lining up here inquiring about your equipment. Uh, did you find any fulfillment along the way or did you regret shifting from B to C to B to B? Uh, there, was, there were no regrets really. And um, what satisfies me as a businessman is to see my customers growing. So we have like customers that purchase uh, printing equipment in payment terms and then as the years goes by they come back and they are purchasing equipment in cash. I was like, I'm very happy when such things come. Uh, some customers already have their own facility. Some are even bigger than us. And uh, I'm very proud of them. In some way, if we look things back, we became a part of it, and I'm very honored for that. Well, wow. you know, I, I I really wish that some businessmen would have that kind of uh, business ethic and that kind of uh, vision because it's it's a rarity. I know because I've been I've been 
have encountered a lot of businessmen in, in the country, and now you, you, you are doing this and you know, seeing how they grow, your strategy could be you can supply them, you can embargo them, but this one is something that is uh, synergy. Yes. It's something that works for both ways and truly, really uh, admirable on this. Uh, right now, uh, how many branches do you have and where are your branches? Currently, we're, we have 11 branches. Uh, in Luzon, Makati is our headquarters and we have a branch in, in my hometown, Kalashaw, Pangasinan. We have in Taytay Rizal, uh, Puerto Princesa, Palawan, and Naga City. In Visayas, we have in Bacolod, uh, Cebu, Madawe, Cebu, uh, Tacloban City. And in Mindanao, we have in Sampuanga, in Caliente Oro, and Dawang City. Wow. So you are really targeting the key provincial cities, and hopefully you'll be able to expand in other growing uh, municipalities something. The, the idea of having multiple branches is, number one, the challenge, the logistics challenge, because Philippines being an island, it's a, it's a challenge to tr move from one place to the other. Second is, um, the printing industry is very demanding. The moment the equipment breaks down, it must be fixed right away, because the, those downtime means losses. Yes. Yes. So, one office can only cater to a certain radius, and my objective is to the travel time from one office to, to the customer's time. It should be less than four hours, so that's the radius that one mm -hmm. office covers. Wow, you have really considered all the full gamut of uh, the business, like the after sales service. Yes. Uh, right now we are in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that you are encountering and how do you deal with these challenges? Oh, there's, you know, um, during the, these times, during the pandemic, number one, the demand in printing really suffered. Uh, Pre-pandemic sales up to present, I cannot match it. But, and we have to work hard to earn less, unlike the pre-pandemic times. But it's a lesson learned that, you know, um, yeah, we can do why aren't we doing these sacrifices pre-pandemic time? So it's a lesson learned. We have to work hard even without the pandemic. Because uh, pre-pandemic, we tend, we tend to relax. Then now we realize how hard it is to sell, and now we're working so much. So yes, that's some adjustments. Are, that, that's some of our adjustments. Second is um, we have to be connected, we have to take advantage of the technology that is to offer, uh, Zoom, Teams. Um, Pre-pandemic, um, it's, it's a good timing that we shifted our uh, recording from manual into digital. Now we're, our ERP is running, so we, we tend to mo we, we monitor our inventories and our sales and expenses through this ERP. It's very timely. Wow, that, that's a good, because you were able to adapt uh, way ahead of the, before the problem of course being. I think this is one of the best type of leadership to be able to think uh, systematically and with this I think I should really salute you for that. Um, what kind of uh, printers do you carry and uh, what kind of opportunities do you provide to but the entrepreneurs out there. Uh, with ES Print, we have uh, large format printing and finishing equipments for signage and textile. We also have sewing machines, embroidery machines, uh, heat transfer vinyls, um, and much more. Wow. And recently, I have to congratulate you. You know, uh, you were able to bring in the Japan's uh, technology, and you are the one who. Uh, the, the, I, I saw the video of the Japanese uh, praising you, uh, thanking you for bringing Motu here. Uh, what led you to bring Motu here in the Philippines? Uh, it's always, I, I want to bring the printing industry to the next level and I hope um, Muto, can, Muto can help us achieve that goal. Uh, Muto is a one of the biggest manufacturer of uh, PSO printers in the world and 
with their experience and with our arsenal, we hope that we can manage to deliver those printers with strong after solid sales support. Mm -hmm. I see that you know your employees are very grateful for the opportunities that you have given them. Uh, what standard did you set as far as work ethic and uh, output in their uh, work? As far as my employees are concerned, again, you, you don't need a college degree to be part of ESPRINT. Um, trust is more important to us. If you can be trusted and you're hardworking, you're willing to learn, we will equip you with the knowledge. Um, I cannot send my engineer or my, my technical team without the arsenal, without the knowledge. So now, if I don't trust my technical guy, I cannot train him because he might compete with me. Yeah. So the thing is, I need to try. I need to trust this guy and equip him, and then together we can deliver what is needed. Without trust, better not start. Yes. So trust is the key, the operating word. Yes. Yes, that's. And right. second is also, we need to compensate them. We need to compensate them fairly. We cannot just think thank our employees and then they go home with a hungry tummy. They also need money in their pockets. They have families to support. Mm. Because I notice also you treat them like a family and uh, I, that despite that, because they said familiarity breeds contempt. How do you balance that? Seriously, in the office I can be your best friend, but I can be your worst enemy. Worst enemy. <laughs> So I am sure being a fair person that you are and I have known for so long, the only time that you become your, their worst enemy is if they did something foolish, right? There are many bonding entrepreneurs out there and you are a young entrepreneur promising that to lead more business, to create more opportunities. What is your message to them? It sounds funny, but seriously, if you want to go into business, you try and try until you succeed. Mm -hmm. When I started ESPRINT, it's not profitable. First year, second year, third year, it's not prof profitable. But I didn't give up. So I, I tried, uh, I corrected what's, what's wrong, I did adjustment. Um, it was really a struggle. But then in due time, if you work hard, you achieve your goals. And don't be in a hurry. Profits will come, but it doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think that is the challenge right now when everybody wants, wants to hatch the egg by hammering it. Mm -hmm. And through the years, uh, you are able to control that and succeed. Was there a time that you get frustrated and wanted to give up? A lot of times, a lot of times, ah, customer challenges, employees, yeah, but I'm getting, I'm, now I'm used to it, I'm used to it. Yeah, but I, I think that that's good, that uh, you're able to control, take control of everything. Do you think that inspires you to be persistent in this dream? Mm. Right now, our, our contributions to the printing industry, that's what drives us. We really don't aim to be number one, but seeing our customers improve, seeing their, our customer success will be probably our legacy. Yeah, so it's more of legacy building. Uh, I think uh, one time you told me, just stick to the purpose and you will succeed and everything else follow rather than rushing. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, wanting to have quick back. This one, when you build your printing empire, you're slowly, you started from a humble uh, beginnings, then now you are, and the shift that you made from business to consumer to business to business, I think this is really a good legacy. If there are people who inspire you to continue this, who are they? Uh, my family, of course, uh, like I always said, I have a company to run and a family to feed. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's good.
and of course my, my customers because um, we're it's our commitment if I if we sell them a printer it doesn't end there we cover them with warranty and after warranty it doesn't end there we should support the printer until its economic life but what I mean by economic life is um, if the printer is designed to last for five years if we can support it and extend that lifetime to 10 years then it's better yes just like a, a car having a high mileage car even for so long but if it performs well yes. then it's still a usable and uh, feasible thing to, to use what do you think is your greatest asset as a business owner Monty I think that I'm a very fair person and you know justice is served where justice is due if you perform well we compensate you well but I'm a very uh, Monty I can say that I'm a very fair person yes. we do business in good faith and you're very young uh, 10 years from now where do you see yourself oh 10 years from now probably I'm retired that's good yeah that's a very good question 10 years from now where do I where do I see myself you know what even if I work 24 7 I'll never I'll, I'll never be Lusutan I'll never be Henry C or I'll never be Ramon Ang. So I, I'd rather retire early and happy than chase those money. It's I think it's more of uh, contentment. Mm -hmm. oh, that's true. You know, what wisdom can you impart to your children? We weren't born with a golden spoon. Uh, I saw my mom and my dad struggle when we were starting. And when they had their savings, they really supported me. Um, and I want my, I don't want my, my children to suffer the struggles, but I want them to understand. I want them to feel or experience life as basic as possible. And then I want them to appreciate whatever they have right now. Yeah, because I, I saw in, in your video that you're teaching your son pumping yeah, the water. And um, what was in your mind when you did that? Teach them the basics. They should be able to eat by their hand. If there's no AC, they should, they, they should be able to sleep. You know, luxury comes later. If they want luxury, they have to work for it. But luxury is not being served to them. Oh, that's good. Uh, is there a message that you want to impart to our Filipino people? Again, uh, continue to chase your dreams. Never give up. Try and try until you succeed. It's very basic, but really, that's a formula.